ಏತದ್ಯೋನೀ ಭೂತಾನಿ ಸರ್ವಾಣೀತ್ಯುಪಧಾರಯ ಅಹಂ ಕೃತ್ಸ್ನ ಜಗತ ಪ್ರಭವ ಪ್ರಲಯಸ್ತ ವಿ ಸಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ how shri krishna told arjun that he is going to reveal to him the nature of devotion the supreme object of devotion the knowledge by which this devotion is cultivated and the realization of this knowledge and then he began explaining that one out of thousands endeavors for perfection and one out of such thousands actually knows god in truth then he went on to say that all that you see in the world is all the energy of god further he said all the souls they are also his energy they are his superior energy divine energy now in the sixth verse he says that all living beings they are a combination of these two energies in other words we have the so we are the soul and we have a body similarly the soul is divine energy and the body is material energy so these living beings are continuously being created and then they go back there's a cycle that takes place in nature called srishti sthiti and pralay god creates the world what happens when he creates the one primordial energy starts unfolding that primordial energy is called prakriti its first manifestation is called mahan the next manifestation is called ahankar after that the panchatan matra manifest that is taste touch sight smell the five sense perceptions now i imagine the sophistication of vedic philosophy these are also seen as energies and then the five gross elements manifest space from space comes air the gases then fire then from that comes water and from that comes the earth and from earth all the living beings the, the plants etc are born so that energy unfolds to create the variegatedness of matter and at that time the souls that were existing in suspension in the unmanifest state in the stomach of god called the mahodar when he creates the world based on their past karmas he gives puts them in a suitable body so based on what we deserved we are given the body and we continue on our journey those who get liberated they are released from the material realm those who are not they just continue here so we go on cycle of life and death we the soul has three bodies 
This is the gross body. Consisting of the five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air and sky. Then there is a subtle body. This consists of the five knowledge senses, the five working senses, the five life airs, mind, intellect and ego. And then there is a causal body consisting of our sanskars, karmas of endless lifetimes. So when this gross body becomes dysfunctional, the uninhabitable for the soul, it becomes a wreck, less like a car becomes a wreck or a house becomes a wreck, you vacate it and go to the next house. So the soul leaves this gross body. But its subtle body and causal body go along with it. So according to the causal body and subtle body, it's given another gross body. It goes into another mother's womb. And then it is born, it continues, then again. So the gross body is changed in every lifetime. But the subtle body is continuing. That is why the mind is not of one lifetime. The mind is continuing from many lifetimes. That is the reason why even a blind person, somebody who is blind from birth, can also see dreams. Because the mind has the images from past lifetimes. So this goes on. Then at the end of creation, God again rewinds the world. So the Panchatan Matra merge into the, the Panchatan, Panch Mahabhut merge into the Panchatan Matra. That they merge into Ahankar. Ahankar merges into Mahan. Mahan merges into Prakriti. And the subtle Maya goes and resides in God again. So what happens to the souls at that time? They can't have any subtle bodies because matter, the material energy in all forms is unmanifest. So what happens to the subtle body? That is also finished. But the causal body remains. It's sanskars, karmas of endless lifetimes. That remains with the soul. So the souls, the whole creation is unmanifest. The souls, the material energy, all residing in God. Awaiting the next cycle. The next cycle, again he manifests it all. So then according to the causal body, the soul is again given a subtle body and a gross body. So this cycle is going on and on and on. Srishti, Sthiti, Pralai. Creation, maintenance, dissolution. Creation, maintenance, dissolution. Everything that is taking place is stemming from God. And there are those souls who are liberated. They have gone beyond to the divine abode of God. So now he concludes this discussion in the seventh verse. Mattaha parataram nanyat Kinchidas tidhananjaya, Mai sarvamidam protam, Sutre manigana eva, Having explained everything in creation as stemming from him, Shri Krishna now says, Arjun, there is no truth higher than me. He is the absolute truth. See, if I tell you, this is a watch, that's the truth. If I tell you it's a bell, that is the untruth. Right? So this truth is also of categories. For example, we just discussed how Newton 
said the whole world is like a machine if you know the present moment and all the forces you can predict the next moment because it's like a machine but then michael faraday the truth he presented of the magnetic field of the magnetic force it went beyond the truth of newton and that was superseded by einstein and einstein's truth was superseded by neil bohr his quantum theory now these two could not be tied up if they can if the unified field theory can be found in science that will be considered the absolute truth in this realm so what about the absolute truth of the whole of creation is there any absolute truth some people say you know there is no absolute truth this is all relative the the present generation the present era in philosophy is considered the era of post modernism and the characteristic of post modernism is that there is no absolute truth you just define it as you like you are free to define the truth the way you like now that may sound very nice but it's not functional because then a terrorist can say the truth for me is that i should throw bombs in that civilian locality you may say that is wrong the terrorist will say it may be wrong for you but it's right for me so if there is no absolute truth then you cannot censure anyone for any act shri krishna says here arjun i god am the absolute truth and everything is situated within me everything see the judaic religion say there is a satan there is a god and there is a satan but then who created satan did god create satan if he did why did he do such a bad thing if he did not where did satan come from the vedic philosophy is there is no satan shri krishna says everything is strung on me everything in this world is existing within me it's created by me it's all my energies there is no scope for this evil being called satan so since everything is connected with god if we can come to know god we can come to know everything there was once a boy his summer vacation was going on so he had his restless energy and he was creating ruckus at home so his father was quite agitated how to control this dennis the menace <laughs> so he got an idea there was an economics time magazine out there and there was a map of usa so his father said son take a look at this map very carefully once you have memorized it i'll cut it into 20 25 pieces and i'll jumble the pieces then you have to put them all back so the boy looked at it this way this way and he said father i've done it and he gave it to him so father said so quickly you've memorized the map of usa <laughs> yes father so he cut off the pieces and gave it to the son 
Okay, construct the map from these jumbled pieces. The sun made it in five minutes flat. And he said, Father, here it is. The father said, my God, you have done it so quickly. I knew you were intelligent, but I did not know you were so intelligent. Hereditarily, have you got my quality of intelligence? <laughs> what is the secret? The son said, Father, when you gave me that magazine to memorize the map, I turned the page over. And there was a suiting's advertisement. There was a man there wearing a suit. So there was the suiting's advertisement. I memorized that. <laughs> so when you gave me the pieces, I turned them over and made this man and then turned them back. <laughs> so in the same way, the absolute truth is the Supreme Lord from whom everything has stemmed. So the Vedas say, Ekasmin vigyate sarvamidam vigyatam bhavati. If you know that one God, you will know everything. Yena shrutam shrutam bhavatya matam matam avigyatam vigyatam avijanatam vijanatam. Having heard him, you don't need to hear anything else. Having seen him, you don't need to see anything else. Having attained him, you don't need to attain anything else. Having realized that one absolute truth, you have realized everything. So by saying this verse, Sri Krishna now strongly establishes himself or God in any form as the object of devotion. 